We are here near the intersection of 11th and Cook Street. We're trying to keep our camera as dry as possible, so we can't really show you just how bad the flooding is getting due to this heavy rain that we're receiving right now. Actually, there's a car uh, stuck in the floodwaters down there. We showed you earlier in our morning show. This morning on Sunrise, if you want to come take a look, you can still see a little bit of the remnants of the pipe bomb that was detonated. You can see it was right over here uh, on this corner of the 600 block of Washington Avenue. And again, uh, investigators say if anyone ever sees anything suspicious like this, don't hesitate to call your local police department. And the good news here, no one was injured. The bad news is we're still on the lookout for a suspect and we'll give you more information as becomes available. All right, you guys got pretty good at it. You're actually going to show me how to milk one of the dairy cattle. We're not going to do the old school way by hand. We're going to do the what I say yeah. new school way. New school way. Yeah, I think you'll enjoy it. My son will assist you there. So. All right, and what's the name of the cow? Gina. Gina, all right, I'm going to give him my mic. We're switching roles well, today. Okay, I always wanted to be on TV, so this is good. <laughs> Although it may not be crowded here now, tonight is the night this game is going to be very crowded with rivals, the Glenwood Titans taking on the Rochester Rockets. And joining me now is Rochester Rocket cheerleader head coach Kinsey Greer. Kinsey, thanks for joining us this morning. Firefighters in Beeson burned down the home where five family members were beaten to death. Firefighters did it at the request of the G family. Rick and Ruth G, along with three of their children, were killed by Christopher Harris in 2009. A young girl left for dead lived. For those who are off the clock today, there are many people who are still hard at work. We went down to Jacksonville and checked out the Twyford Barbecue and Catering World headquarters to see how they're preparing for this 4th of July holiday. Good evening, I'm Alicia Lewis. Chantel Middleton has the night off. In tonight's top story, a Springfield Democrat with ties to a former capital city mayor announces his run for a local office. With the month of August beginning, it's time to realize summer vacation is nearly over. And for District 186 students, that means it's time to register for school. ABC News Channel 20's Alicia Lewis is live outside the Sangamon County Jail this morning with more. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning, Andrew and Natalie. Right now, every inmate that enters the Salmon County Jail is assigned a number that goes into the system which contains their criminal history. Now, for the past five decades, thousands of these records have been stored. However, now the Salmon County Sheriff's Department is hoping to change all that by ditching the paper documents and digitizing the records. But it will come with a cost. As you can see, we've got over 120,000 files here. More than 120,000 files, representing more than 120,000 inmates. Some criminal records dating back to the 1960s. When a person is brought into the Sangamon County Jail, their first time in, they're assigned what we call an arrest jacket number. And that number will remain with them their entire lives. So it's a way of uh, tracking that individual and it's a way of uh, record keeping for us. As of January 1st of this year, the Sangamon County Jail began inputting new inmates records into their computer database. But for every arrest jacket prior to 2014, there is still a paper record taking up space. We've got you know, a, a giant room full of these and we'll do nothing but increase those numbers over the years. Now the department is hoping to digitize every record with help from the circuit clerk's office. And right now they're in the works of coming up with a price for such a time consuming task. The problem is a lot of these files, there's a lot of staples in them. There's all different sizes of paper in that that have to be scanned in. But they do have the excellent equipment over there that they can do that. Digitizing every document found inside every record. In the long run, we'll save the department both time and money. Now we're going to be much more efficient. Um, again, we can ship information to another law enforcement agency very quickly. Our detectives can pull things up very quickly from their own computer rather than have to physically walk into records, pull the jacket, and then, and then physically go through all the whole file. Now, the Salmon County Sheriff's Department says once all the files are digitized, they will recycle all the files and they still have to decide on a price. However, they say it has to, uh, that depends on how far back with the files they want to go. Reporting live in Springfield, Alicia Lewis, ABC News Channel 20. ABC News Channel 20's Alicia Lewis is live in Lincoln this morning with more. Alicia? Andrew, if motors are traveling along I-55 North and heading to Lincoln, the exit they'll most likely take is exit 123. Now, when they take that exit and start traveling to the city of Lincoln, they're going to run into this. It's a road close sign, which uh, causes commuters to have to turn around and get back on the interstate, a problem the mayor here was trying to fix. They are frustrated that the signage isn't 
adequate enough to notify them or they didn't understand the signage. Lincoln Mayor Keith Snyder is talking about this sign, which is located about a mile south of Lincoln exit 123. If you're coming up, it's it's three lanes approaching that exit, so you might be in the middle lane or you might be blocked out by another car and miss the sign. The sign on I-55 North tells commuters heading to Lincoln that I-55 business loop is closed, causing confusion for those looking to get into the city. You have to read it and understand it and kind of decipher it to know that you have to you shouldn't get off at that exit, but continue on to the next one. The reason for the closure is due to a $12 million bridge reconstruction project that has been in the works since March. By going to complete closure, we took the construction time down from 27 months down to 14 months. So basically, we reduced the inconvenience to the motorist by half the time. Although IDOT saved about $1 million on this project by completely closing the bridge on exit 123, motorists like this one, who took the exit, drove all the way to the bridge, only to see a road close sign and having to turn around, is what Mayor Snyder says is an inconvenience to drivers. Maybe if we just had a sign at the top of the exit where people didn't have to go all the way to the bridge, then turn around and try to backtrack their way to get back on the interstate. But just a sign there that might say, you know, the bridge is out, you want to go to Lincoln, just continue on to exit 126. Now, Mayor Snyder did reach out to IDOT officials, and IDOT officials already res responded. In fact, when we were driving to Lincoln this morning, we saw that they put up a big electronic sign at the top of the exit there that said exit 123 is closed due to the bridge, and commuters should take exit 126. Reporting live in Lincoln, Alicia Lewis, ABC News Channel 20. Once we arrived in Washington, D.C., nearly 160 veterans and their guardians filled three different tour buses and began our day-long journey through our nation's capital. Veterans received a warm welcome as they arrived in our nation's capital. Their first stop, the World War II Memorial, which was dedicated to more than 16 million men and women who served our country during that war. 26 of those heroes were aboard the flight. I joined when I was 17 years old. I left high school and started in, and by that time, the war was coming to a close, and I was uh, involved in deactivating some of these uh, air posts like uh, bowling field and so forth. World War II veteran Bob Sterling's son has heard his father's stories of his time during the war and finally seeing the memorial made in his honor is something the two will never forget. Uh, so many of these veterans would never have had a chance to come to D.C. They would never have had a chance to experience this. They wouldn't have had a chance to see other veterans and talk to them. From there, the veterans hopped back on the bus and headed to the Korean War Memorial, where we ran into Korean War veteran Mervyn Olson who served 13 months on the front line of the 13th parallel, bringing along with him memories of the past, memories of his friend. I was in the service with him, Adrian Dumas from Kankakee, Illinois, and he died. And here's his dog tag. Dog tags, statues, and more than 58,000 names in memory of the soldiers killed during Vietnam. The memorial hitting close to home for the Vietnam veterans from Sangamon County, who are with the Inter-Veterans Burial Detail. It gives a little bit of closure to the families, too, you know, for military uh, veterans, you know, and, and there, there are comrades that, that have uh, marched on. Marching on and living another day to see how their sacrifices made a difference in our nation today. One of the biggest highlights from our trip was visiting Arlington National Cemetery where veterans and guardians were able to see the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier and the Changing of the Guard. The tomb you see here in the video is guarded 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And the soldier actually drags his heel during the Changing of the Guard to recognize and honor our World War II veterans. And it was definitely something I think if you don't go on the honor flight, you should definitely go to Arlington National Cemetery mm -hmm. and see that. Now, it is this, really cool. Was this your first time going to Washington, D.C.? Yes, so I was kind of experiencing it all with the veterans and the guardians, and also taking it all in myself. How it was awesome is that? These stories are so interesting and fun to watch, just to see their emotion firsthand. Of course, you expect them to think it's special, but to see it in their eyes and hear their emotion and their sound bites, it's really special. Yeah.